Hey everybody, we're back out here in the shop and we've got Kira out here and, and I want to show you what we've got. We're starting out with a 3000 watt, kind of a discounted, lower priced inverter and these have a lot of capabilities in certain usage and they're very affordable. So I'm going to show you this. Look below the video, I'm going to put a link to everything. And if you guys see this, ain't that pretty? We got our own truck. I mean, this is a 3000 watt inverter. 12 volt, 115 volt, that's what they label them out there. Typically about 118 or 20 volts. We're going to go through it. Now, in an older video, I got that inverter, and they ended up doing it as a write-off because it showed up with parts missing. Now, this is a similar brand, but that company is, uh, they're not doing well. This company is doing well. So, Kira is going to go ahead and start unboxing it. And this comes in all kinds of voltages, 12, 24, 36, 48, you name it, 60 volt. You can order them how you want. There'll be a link below the video for all this different stuff we're using here. Um, one of the things we're going to do is we're going to be putting it on an oscilloscope. We're going to take a look at it. Now, if you guys are interested in these, they're about 80 or 90 bucks. They really are impressive. So and if y'all look below my videos now, if it's Google or YouTube or somebody, they put that thing down there now where it's got like a, I don't know, somewhere right in here, it says applause or applaud. I just noticed it a couple days ago. And um, apparently, my I guess I'm uh, part of a beta project. So right down there, you can uh, you can send money to uh, to put her through school. Uh, that's, kind of, that's basically what it gets used for. Now, I'll go ahead and take these ends off, Kira Marie. All right, now we've got... This inverter is somewhat heavy. I'd say it's about 14 pounds. And uh, go ahead and get it unwrapped. They come with a little booklet. They come with, here's something inside of that. Now we haven't had a chance to open this up and go through it, so you get to see it first shot. So there's the information on it right there. And I'll get this opened up. We'll get here to open that up. Here, open that. Okay. And dump all the parts out right over there so we'll know what we got comes with a set of cables. Now, we see this a lot. I'm not a big fan of it, but if they're crimped right, it doesn't matter. You In your car, in your automobile, you're going to have a lot of wires that are doubled or tripled for amperage purposes. Now, this looks like, I'd say probably not 4 gauge. It's, big, it's heavier than 6 gauge, so I'd say it's somewhere in between. And don't pay attention to my dirty hands. I, I work a lot. Um, it's got dual fans on it. Looks like it's got heavy three to 400 amp over there. Let's see here. I don't know what, there's some weird things in here. I have no idea what they are. Uh, terminals, oh, I, I know what they are. This is for the terminals right here. Okay, so that would be output voltage there and the ground. And then, I ain't got a clue what them things are. Maybe they'll tell me. Um, so it comes with a slew of 40 amp fuses. The inverter is kind of kind of basic. And it looks like it would have the MOSFETs possibly connected here on the side. We're not sure, but we're going to open it up. So we're going to open this thing up and we're going to take a look at it. We're going to look at the inside so you'll see all the staging and everything that's in here, the control boards, all the different things that it functions on. That's what we're going to do right now. So here in just a minute, you'll see it open. It's a pretty simple process. Looks like just the screws here and here. And then you just kind of let that loose on both ends. And then I believe, yes, it has a clamshell right there. And the top should lift off. The bottom screws will stay because they're holding the board parts in. And we're going to see how thick the board is, how thick the cabling is. And this is by CNS Sweep Power or CN Sweep Power, China Sweep Power, and um, I'll put that information best I can down there at the very, very bottom. So like if uh, under the video, look down, there'll be a few links, and then way down at the bottom, I'll put all the stats that I can put on these that comes out of their information. It looks like um, they do have a positive feature on them that I believe is a full 15 plus volt over volt. So if you got wind turbines, and your inverters are going wacko, uh, like sometimes mine do, full 15 volt. A lot of them, they're 14.5, and when your solar charger goes into bulk, they just they just quit. 
So this doesn't do that. So, but here's, look, look at all the different input voltages on this thing. That's opportunities or things you can get. And then it tells you what it's capable of. Over here, let's see here. So it's single phase. You can get it in European voltage or American voltage or North American voltage. Um, I think and South American voltage. And then it tells you there's different models. They have solar charge controllers. They have, uh, some of these have got built-in chargers for, for like uh, if you have a UPS system, uh, a backup system. Um, if you have one of those, they make an inverter, this brand, that has like a 10 or 15 amp charger in it. You leave it on the wall, leave your two batteries down the basement or wherever you want to put them at. Anytime there's a power failure, it goes through the uh, un, um, uh, circuit protection and, and powers your system back up. So it'll have a 110 in or whatever, or 220 European in it, and then it'll have an output. So it just kind of feeds through there, but it goes to your critical circuits, refrigerator, freezer, things like that. All right, we're going to pull it apart, and we'll be right back. All right, everybody, we've opened it up. Uh, Kara and Dominic went ahead and got it opened up. They've done this stuff before. And like I said, it's just a lift off. It just comes off the top. And then the screws, they're mounted into the heat sinks on both sides. So you'll see screws that are going into the side panels. That's where they're at. So they've been in here figuring out what it's capable of, what it'll do, going through the math in here and, and verifying it. So I'll let her explain how they come up with some of these numbers and what they learned inside. All right, as you can see right here, we got fuses that are really easy to take out, unlike most of we've ever seen, which you have to remove a few parts to deal with the fuses. And they come with a brand new set of them, all of them, and they're capable, 400 amps. And then we have these cables that are 360 amps at 18 inches, which if you do the math, that's 2,980 and 3,090 watts capability. Well, capable. So it is, it's pretty much pretty much close mathematically with cable, cables and fuses to what they're claiming. Mm -hmm. Now, these show a 6,000 watt peak. If you've ever bought an inverter, you can take that 6,000 watts and throw it out the window. It's a worthless number. It will not do you any good. Now, in most cases, uh, on an average, you take that and then you can add about 40 percent so uh, bas basically you can probably peak out about 4300 watts 4500 and be safe anything at 6000 you know that's gone yes yeah, so it's a very nice little inverter very easy to deal with it's yeah it's it is simple it's 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 not only is it simple here's a unique feature this is an encased cap capacitor that's a first i've not seen that in many of these cheaper inverters another thing is look i'll show you my hands here look how freaking big they did these transformers and they're if you look huge. at them yeah they're huge you look at the transformers the transformers have a 3200 watt winding in them that it's a 6t that's significant i didn't expect that and these down here normally they'll be 20 volt and these down here are 36 that i didn't expect so my complaints about that one, and I just now figured out why they included these. They're for the feet. That was one of my complaints, so that you didn't have any flex when you're casing, expand, and contract. You didn't have a chance of breaking your board. A lot of inverters, their people secure them down real hard, and they listened to me and included these. These are like little grommets they insert on the little foot points right there. So that's that. that this company's responsive. That's the first. I've dealt with a lot of companies, man, and they just don't listen. They don't give a damn what you tell them. They're responsive. I told them I needed minimum 14 gauge. Look at that, 14 gauge. I said I need minimum 12 gauge. Look at that, 12 gauge. They just built it out of about four emails of me communicating with them saying, here, here's what's wrong with that. And they did. Is it capable of 3,000? Well, yeah, it, it do 3,000. That's about its limit. And each fuse... You can give 8% on top of that. So is it capable of 6,000? No. 4,500, 46 maybe, 48. That's the ceiling on it for a peak. But with that cap in it, that's like a starter cap for an air conditioner. That right there, that helps big time. Um, you look at this big toroidal transformer. Look how freaking big it is. And it's not loose. Every one of them I've got a hold of these, you can rock them. This thing here, it's solid. That's a good thing. 
over here, your main caps over here, I want you to look at this. Most of the time, if you're lucky, you're going to see 150 volt. If you're lucky. I'm going to get a close-up right there. 250. 820 microfarad, 250. So the power storage to get down inside of your alternating side here. So this is, this is your stage and you're alternating and this is your DC buck. So you're going to bring your DC up. You're going to bring it over here. You're going to convert it into alternating and then you're going to stage it up to the amount of power you need. Now, here's the best part. Let me see if I can get this little flashlight thing on here. I want you to look at the size of these FETs that are down in here. These things are huge. Look at my fingers. Those are huge. Yeah, my nicotine stained finger. Now, another thing is about a, I think they call this a uh, five meter, so it'd be 16 feet long remote. And the remote is kind of nice. Instead of most of them where they're just two wire, this one here also has inverter on and alarm as well as your on and off. Now, a lot of them, they don't have that. They're just a button or they're just on and off and that's the end of it. They don't do anything else. This one here is a real nice one and it's metal. It's not plastic junk. So pretty good little standard bone jack for wire. Inside, you want to get deeper inside. Let me show you this. This is, this is the part that I immediately recognized is the thickness of that board. Look at that board. That is a very nice thick board. And they've done a very good job in the thickness of the clad that's in it because uh, you can't probably tell by this phone or this, this camera, but the thickness of these is a lot thicker than this one here that's two years old or so. A lot thicker, a lot nicer, a lot heavier. And your voltage adjustment so you can fine-tune it is much nicer and easier to reach. You know, the other one, it, you literally couldn't get to it. It was just bad. And then, of course, for stability, they used one of these really expensive caps that they put in there. That is a good thing. Everything is heavier. They've not done this. And um, you see the Amazon sellers, a lot of them, man, they're, they're getting ate alive by people sending stuff back. And I told them, I said, you know, guys, y'all want to send me one? I'll pay the shipping. You send it to me. I'll test it. If it's good, I'll, I'll make sure people know. Because you got to get one of these. It's affordable. True sine wave, so that your electronics and your fine things will run on it. And another thing is efficiency, 90%. Okay, you want that. And you want it to have good cooling. So now over here, this is going to be your hottest side, because this is your AC side. 50 Celsius. Most of these have 65 in them. Now, 50 Celsius is about 122, 124 degrees. So that's going to run, and it'll kick on earlier. Most of them, they, they get hot. They get real hot before they kick on. So you got less chances of toasting your FETs than most of the other sources that you get, uh, most of the other inverter companies. That's a good thing. So they lowered that because I requested it. Uh, so people in southern parts of the world, they'll, they'll be uh, very glad you got that. Over here, um, they've done a lot of heavy securing because I complained. You'd be surprised. Bitch got it, they fix it. So I went in and told them, I said, okay, well, I, I don't like... I don't like the board that, that is not um, uh, heavily secured. And they said, well, we have clips. I said, no, 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 I, that's not good enough. And look, they doped it up real good with a little glue too. So I, I didn't like it because they rocked a little. They were secure. You couldn't push them out, but I didn't like it. So they went a little further. That's, that means that these guys here, they, they, they don't screw up. All right. Now, you've seen a little run-through on it. You see how it's built. Now, get over here. Let me get on the DC side, and you can see in there, they got doubles. See, look, doubles, doubles, not singles, doubles for every stage. See it? Doubles. Everything's doubles. So instead, depending on one MOSFET, they got doubles on every one. That, that, look how freaking big that heat sink is. That is good. That's real good. Um, quality? It looks like we've had a 200% increase, and that wasn't bad. That, that works good since I dealt with it, but it wasn't bad. This is going to have to be a lot better. Um, let's get to the next stage here. We're going to hook it up. We're going to test the voltage. We're going to take a look at what it looks like in the, mult, in the uh, oscilloscope. We're going to check it with a rundown on the voltage. Uh, right now, my battery here, let me get this here. 
go to off. Yeah, I left it on here. Right now, my battery over here is absorbing some power off my main bank. Uh, looks like uh, two amps, roughly. Two point. There we go. Two point three amps. It's pulling through these wires off my main bank. Uh, Y'all know I've lived off the grid, so this is an older set of batteries. We're going to use it to power this thing up, and we're going to run it through some tests. And I'm going to show you more features on it. All right, let's get this going. All right, guys, we've got it up and running right now. It's all been put back in the box, and let's go ahead and do a test cycle on it. Now, I'm not going to try to pull this thing down because this is just two batteries. And when you're talking a 2,000 watt, that's okay for this. It'll kind of do it. But when you start pulling five, six, seven hundred 700 watts out of it continuous, especially with a heavy resistive load, you're going to suck in batteries down. So these are just at their, their, their fair peak, 1298. And the oscilloscope is set up, so let's check it for voltage quality. Now, the reason you want a 3,000-watt inverter is you want it to work effectively and capable of surges, like for a deep freeze or a refrigerator. But you don't want it to be something you're trying to run 3,000 constant watts out of. If you're wanting something that big, well, you're, you need to buy a row of inverters. You need to buy more. Go ahead, and we're going to kick this thing here on. And it's going to give us our voltage reading. So right now my battery bank is at 13. I am, there's my AC, AC voltage, 123. So let's look over here at the, at the uh, oscilloscope. There we go there. It's showing 120.4. So that just dropped around 21 over there. Okay, and then we'll look over here. We got 122. So you can see there's a little rule of averages out here. This one here probably needs to be tuned a little bit. So I got 123 there and about 123 here and what 121 there. So not too bad. Over here we're pulling what uh, 0.7 to 0.8 amps. So we're pulling about oh what would that be oh, uh, 10 to 12 watts of power on idle like it sits ready to roll. And battery bank at 12.98 over here, showing 12.9 over here. So accuracy and it's uh, a lot of these just aren't accurate. Now, this one here has low battery shutdown at about 11.8, and that's a good thing. You, you don't want this thing screwing up on you, so that's, that's a smart thing to do. Now, one of the things here, let's see here. Um, there we go. One of the things I had to push that or time out, you don't want to think I'm going to run a 3,000 watt load so I'm getting a 3,000 watt inverter. No. No, you don't want to do that. Unless you're going to be supplying 20 of these batteries, you, it can't do it because it's going to pull so much amperage. We're going to show you massive amperage, okay, car starting level of amperage that this thing pulls to make the power you're after. You're wanting the 120, you're wanting true sine waves, so your electronics, your LCD TVs, your computers, all that runs good. Your refrigerators start and they don't hum. Um, and you can see the wave of it right now, right there. Now, I've got this wired in, so it has its terminals that go in. One goes to ground, and then you, your green goes to ground, and then your white and your black, just like that. So we're gonna turn the fan on. That's just the fan. You can hear it run. Maybe you can see it pull up and see it spinning in there. Yep, there we go. Um, and then we're going to see that this thing here timed out. Hold on. I thought I heard something beeping. So we'll see what our amps are. So it's pulling 2.7, 2.9. 2 okay. Sine wave still looks nice and good. My wattage being pulled is... 15 and a half watts to blow the little blower that's in this. My voltage still steady, 1290, but right at 13. Now, this fan is set up, so we're gonna go to the first step of 600 watts. So that's a rough estimate. So it's about probably 615, 625, and we're gonna look at it over here. There's the wattage going to it, and we'll see how the inverter reacts. Here, I'm gonna switch it now. Now there's 600 watts, so it drops down to 12.5, 12.4. Still very, very, very steady over there. And I have got 620, roughly 625 uh, going through it. 620, yeah, there you go. All right, going through it. And it's stable it's at 12.3. And here's the big story right here. 55 amps DC, see? 
And you guys really want one of these meters, man. They're wicked. Uh, I'll put a link to that too, but there you go. Almost 56 amps. And then now we'll shut it back down to fan. We'll allow it to come back down to 15 down there and then you'll see it returns. Okay, so 600 watt load with only two batteries, no engine running behind it. That's, that's a hell of a tax on any battery system. Now, I've got this thing here sitting here uh, hooked into it, and I've got the one just like an older one sitting down here on the floor hooked to it. So I've got an extra 36 amps running into that 225 or 30 amp little bank there. It's not a lot. Um, a lot less than what I should have. So we're going to go ahead and hit it with a 900 watt hit, and it's going to suck that battery down hard. You watch. Now we're going to see if it's going to change. I'm going to click it so you'll get the chance to see if it actually sucks it down, okay? It'll show a real differentiation in that wave. Now, here we go again. We're gonna run that thing on up. Here's the wattage. There we go, 972 peak, about 950 normal. And over here, we are pulling 85 amps, okay? 85 amps. And over here, I've got my battery running at 12.29 like so you see it's pulling it down pretty hard now if you think about that the 89 amps over here and 970 watts over here it kind of bounces around on it um, the wave on it is just staying pretty steady so you still have 120 volts it's very steady differentiation differentiation of about 1.6 to 2 percent in other words, that's the difference between the two points off of zero. And voltage is still held pretty steady with 900 watts coming out of it. So if we got down to 11, it would really hurt us bad. So let's go ahead and turn this thing off. And we'll get back down to idle again. So it's fan kicked on there. So you can't even hear that fan. That's really good. So it's only pulling, what is that? One and a half amps total with the fan on it and voltage is returning on the battery because the battery saturation now is this a good inverter can it do hitting that yes if i doubled the batteries but i don't have double batteries sitting here you would be required you would be required if you want a a 2000 watt supply to have a 3000 watt inverter if you need a 1500 watt supply see there You'd need an 18 to 2,000 watt if you need a 500 watt continuous supply, game, uh, game machines and a big TV. You'd need a 6 to 800 watt inverter. And then with those, you would need the following. So two of those deep cycle batteries is only good for that kind of setup. And six of them, it would take six. Now, if you wanted, you know, 1,000 to 1,500, of course, you'd have four. Put that in the middle there. But... 1800 to 2000 watts of inverter for 1500 watt average need six of those batteries So here you go. There's your 1500 watts. Basically. I would need six of those batteries That's just your amp conversion to watts math at 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 uh, Where's that at 90% Ooh, there you go 90% so if you're wanting 2000 watts capability a refrigerator occasional use of a microwave your big color TV and maybe you know a dvd player or a game machine uh, or a satellite unit um, you would need a 2000 watt unit or you're going to need 2000 watts of capacity so you want a 3000 watt unit three quarters basically of the power two thirds to three quarters of the power you need a 3000 watt unit so that your efficiency stays high and you would need eight of these batteries and 2400 watts of incoming solar or 1800 watts of solar and 600 watts of wind power to achieve these things so a lot of people they hook up one of these big monsters to a little car battery and, and it boom as soon as they kick it on here look i'll send this thing all the way up to fly watch i just sent it all the way to 1425 watts on those two those two batteries basically so watch what she does boom off she goes that's so sad now turn it completely off again Watch the voltage bounce all the way back up. And when she gets to 12.8, she'll come back on. And they're wondering, why in the hell did that happen? Well, that is more amps. In fact, that'd be about 140 amps out of a 230 amp battery. That's pulling it down 50% DOD right off the top. Now, if I had twice that, 
I could do that without hurting it. If I had three times that, I could do that for a long time. If I had four times this, I could live off of it. So don't underestimate your batteries. Down below the video, I put a link to Batteries Plus. If you go to the link and you take the 10% and order online, when you're talking about buying eight of them at 130 bucks a piece, that's big, man. That's big. So, and that's what you got to do. That's what you got to do. Good inverter, well worth its weight, a very impressive little unit, and it is not something, so it's getting up around its restart uh, voltage right now. But if you compare that, that one that's sitting right over here and this one that's over here, the, the, the difference, the quality has made a huge jump forward. So there, it just come back on. So there's past its 12.8. Um, and return with nice pretty voltage. But I put a heavy resistive load with just a couple of batteries and a little backup because hoping it'll help. The batteries are older, but it's worth a try. I could hook this to my big bank and just run the hell out of it, run this two of these at 1,500 watts all day long off of this inverter. But I wanted you to guys see the internals, how much better they are now, the accuracy of your meters now, the quality of the sine wave. This is, uh, this is way... Actually, that one there has a nick in it about right there at about 28 at the bars there. And it, I can't figure out how to make that one better, but look at that sweet signal. That is, I mean, your CPAP, your medical equipment, anything you got will run off of this well. And it took that big hit with practically no battery over 120 amps. Didn't care. It just didn't have enough battery. Make sure, guys, don't buy one of these and then go, man, that ain't no good. Supply the, If you don't supply the amps, it cannot work. Well worth their money. They're under 300 bucks, I think. I'll put links to them. Y'all guys be good. I hope y'all like what this is and hope it tells you what your goals are if you're going to do this. Your average refrigerator and, and normal household needs are going to be in this range right in here, six to eight batteries. Uh, RVs and little backup power stuff, you'll be in that range. But that's what you're looking for. All right, y'all be good.